as you all know, having a great starting pitching rotation can be one of the greatest blessings in all of baseball, and often is what separates the good teams from the bad ones. In today's video, I'm going to be ranking every team in the American League based on what their starting rotation is going to be on opening day. Uh, if any rotations seem off, uh, blame fan graphs, not me. I got the starting rotations from over there, uh, and I don't make mistakes. Okay, I'm perfect. Uh, basically, how I ranked every team was I graded every player in the rotation from 1 to 5, and then created an average ranking for every team, and that's how my rankings were created. Uh, feel free to let me know what you think of my list down in the comments below, and without further ado, let's get into the video. Uh, coming in at dead last, we got the Kansas City Royals. Uh, Brad Keller will probably be decent for them this year. Uh, and Jordan Lyles might have stretches where he looks decent. But Zach Greinke pitched more like Zach Stinky. And Ryan Yarborough and Brad Keller aren't anything to be excited about either. So don't expect this rotation to do much of anything this year. Uh, coming in at number 14, we got the Baltimore Orioles. You'd think they would have addressed their biggest flaw this offseason, which was their starting rotation as a young team trying to compete, uh, but that was just not the case. While they do have Grayson Rodriguez up on their opening day roster, and they did sign Kyle Gibson, uh, you could replace Cole Irvin, Kyle Bradish, and Dean Kramer with three of me, and you'd probably get similar results. So that is why they're number 14. Uh, coming in at number 13, we got the Oakland Athletics. Uh, their, their rotation is a pretty great reflection of their team because uh, there isn't very much to be excited about. Paul Blackburn, bad. James Caprillion, bad. Ken Wadichuk, I think his name's pronounced, very bad. And we don't know about Shantaro, Shantaro Fujinami uh, because he's a rookie. I have a hunch he'll be solid, but uh, Drew Rosinski, who they signed over from the KBO, was very bad the last time he was in the MLB. So basically, A's fans, I'm saying to probably temper your expectations and not have any expectations for greatness, let alone goodness this season. Coming in at number 12, we've got the Detroit Tigers. They don't have a horrible rotation. No guy in their rotation is really bad. They just don't have any elite pitchers or like exciting pitchers on their team. So they're just a very, like the best way I would describe the rotation is boring. They're not going to blow you away and they're not going to make you hate watching the game. They're just, they're just not a good rotation. They're not awful either, so they're they're sitting here at number 12. Coming in at number 11, we got the Boston Red Sox. Starting pitching isn't going to be the strength of the Red Sox by any means, but I think it's going to be able to keep them in games. Uh, Chris Sale is returning this year, and his stuff is always nasty. And I think t Tanner Howick and Nick Pavetta are prime for breakouts. Uh, Clory Kluber isn't elite anymore, but I think he'll at least eat some a decent amount of innings for the team. And the only guy that's really questionable is Cutter Crawford. Uh, their pitching is not going to win them many games, but it, it'll keep them. A, it'll, it'll do the job of keep them in games most nights. Coming in at number ten in the American League, the I have the Minnesota Twins. The they didn't quite live up to their expectations last year, and a big part of that was because of their starting pitching rotation. Uh, Kenta Maeda and Tyler Maley they had unusually stinky seasons compared to what they normally have. Uh, but so, Sonny Gray and Joe Ryan were still solid, and the Twins picked up Pablo Lopez in a trade to uh, be their new ace. So I think their rotation, at the very least, is serviceable this year. Uh, coming in at number nine, we got the Seattle Mariners. They have Luis Castillo, Logan Gilbert, and Robbie Ray, who have all shown they're capable of having elite stretches. Uh, George Kirby's solid as well, but Marco Gonzalez is going to be the question mark that really uh, needs to be answered if they want to be a great rotation this year. Uh, coming in at number eight, we got the Tampa Bay Rays. Uh, the Rays rotation took a little bit of a hit in spring training because they lost Tyler Glass now for at least the start of the the regular season. But I think the guys that I have available will be able to get a job done when their time is called. And uh, they have a guy in Shane McClanahan who almost won the Cy Young last year, which is definitely going to help them. And I think Drew Rasmussen, Zach Eflin, and Jeffrey Springs are all solid. And I don't think Yanni Chirinos is a great pitcher, but I think he's going to fill in in the five spot nicely while Tyler Glass now is uh, gone. Uh, coming in at number seven, we have the Houston Astros. Uh, they may have lost Justin Verlander in the offseason, but they still have a very solid rotation. Uh, Fran Valdez, Christian Javier, Luis Garcia are all guys that are just about any team would want in their rotation. And while Jose Yerquiti might turn into Jose Yershitty every once in a while, 
Uh, Hunter Brown has a lot of potential to be special, and I think this rotation is going to be fun to watch this year. And at number six, we got the Los Angeles Angels. Uh, they're led by Shohei Itani, who is elite and disgusting. Uh, they got Patrick Sandoval, also disgusting. And Tyler Anderson and Reed Detmers both kind of broke out last year. Uh, the only question mark they kind of have is Jose Suarez, but I think the other guys are going to pick up the slack in the meantime. Uh, coming in at number five, we got the New York Yankees. Uh, to be honest with you, as horrible as horrible as it might be to say, I think Frankie Montas getting hurt might have actually made the Yankees rotation better. <laughs> Frankie Montas, more like Frankie Montas, Mont, ass. Am I right? Garrett Cole will probably be his normal Cy Young candidate itself. Nasty Nestor is probably going to be Nasty Nestor again. And Luis Severino and Domingo Herman are always going to be solid options. Uh, Clark Schmidt came out of the bullpen last year, but I'm really excited to see how he does in the five spot in the Yankees rotation because he's really gross. Coming in at number four, we have the Cleveland Guardians. Uh, the Guardians always have great pitching. And maybe I have Beaver fever, but this year looks like no exception. Uh, Shane Beaver will probably be a Cy Young candidate per usual. And Tristan McKenzie and Cal Contrell both broke out last year, so I expect them to be solid again this year. And Aaron Savali and Zach Plesak are pretty much always reliable. So there's really no glaring holes in this Guardians rotation, and I think that's what really makes them special. Uh, coming in at number three, we have the Chicago White Sox. We have, they have two guys who could potentially uh, contend for the Cy Young this year, and Dylan Cease and Lance Lynn, and two guys that are really solid in Michael Kopech and Mike Clevenger. And I expect uh, Lucas Giolito to kind of return more back to form this year. And if he does, they honestly could be the best rotation in all of the American League this year. Coming in at number two, I have the Toronto Blue Jays. Uh, they have, like the White Sox, they have two potential Cy Young candidates in Kevin Gosman and Alec Manoa and Chris Bassett, who is really, really, uh, really, really solid last year. But... They do have two big, big question marks in Yusei Kikuchi and Jose Barrios, but I'm expecting at least one of the guys to uh, bounce back this year and have a great season. And finally, coming in at number one, I have the Texas Rangers. I honestly don't even think it's close in terms of how good the rotation is in comparison to the rest of the American League. Uh, they already had two solid pitchers in Martin Perez and John Gray last year and then added two more solid guys in Nathan Evaldi and Andrew Heaney, which would have already given them a great rotation to have this year. But they also added a guy that might be the best pitcher in all of baseball in Jacob deGrom. So in my opinion, they have become the top dog in the American League. And uh, they went into the offseason with a clear weakness and I honestly left the offseason with that weakness being their, now their biggest strength. They also pitch in a very friendly, uh, pitcher-friendly park, which I think is going to benefit all of these guys tremendously. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to uh, like and comment and uh, subscribe. Let me know what you thought down below. Uh, there's going to be a part two coming out in a couple days uh, with a ranking for the National League, so keep an eye out for that. And until next time, peace.